let's start with Anthony. Hello, Anthony. You are on the hey. Atheist Experience. What would you like to talk about today? Hey. Hi. I'd like to make the argument for the existence of God that kind of plays off the theme that the universe is the body of God. Uh, okay. Sure. And um, I think it's a little more sophisticated than what you usually hear from a, sci- from a scientific standpoint, and it has two parts, which the first okay. part sets up the conclusion. So, um, all right, here we go. When we look at the human body or the body of a living organism or thing, what is it made up of from a physical standpoint? And the answer at the most yes. basic level is atoms. And, of course, there are subatomic particles, but for simplicity's sake, we'll just say atoms. So if you imagine an atom, it's not immediately obvious that if you arrange a bunch of them together into a more complex structure, they'll produce a sentient being that can experience emotions and conscious awareness and such. So complex arrangements of atoms make up things that appear to be more than just the sum of their parts. And going right to the conclusion, when we ask the question, what is the greater universe made up of? It's made up of star systems and galaxies. And what are star systems? They're basically just bigger versions of atoms. So if you zoom out to the farthest extent of the universe, kind of like how atoms put together to create a conscious entity, even though they don't possess that attribute themselves, maybe solar systems, which are kind of just bigger versions of atoms, create a sort of universe conscious or God consciousness that comes from solar systems adding up to something that's more than just the sum of their parts. Okay, so... um... I see where you're going with that. Uh, I, I see I was having some audio issues. Can you hear me properly? I can hear you. Okay, cool. I, I just saw some people in the chat saying that my mic was kind of low, so I just want to make sure. Um, the uh, First of all, yeah, you could say that a star system looks a little bit like an atom, like you have these several electrons going around a cent- central nucleus, but that would just be comparing it to the orbital model of an atom, which is something that Niels Bohr came up with. That isn't actually how atoms look. It's just a way that we describe atoms to make them make more sense. The way the electrons orbit the nucleus of an atom is way, way, way different. Looks absolutely nothing like a star system would look. Also, the key to a, you know having an atom, like the, the, the point of atoms is the amount of protons in the nucleus the different number of protons identify the different species of atoms. So carbon has six, nitrogen has seven. Seven protons isn't heavy carbon. It is nitrogen. It's going to behave like nitrogen. It's going to bond like nitrogen, which brings me to the next thing. Bonding uh, between atoms is what makes an organism an organism. It's not the atoms that go into a living thing. It's the way those atoms are put together that's important. And chemical bonding only happens because of the valence shell, the outermost electrons being shared between two atoms. And I have yet to find a star system that are connected to another star system because the outermost planets share a similar orbit that doesn't really work. So yeah, at like a very, very surface middle school level, You could say these things look similar, but they are not in any way similar. They don't behave in any way similarly. Like just nothing else about that is any kind of connected. So I would just say that that's a, that that doesn't really track in any way for me. I have nothing to contribute. (laughs) All right. By all means, by all means, please. Well, you, 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 every, everything you said is true and I agree with it, but it's not so much necessary. Well, it is a little bit based on the structure of the atom. I agree. There's not a direct 100%, you know, scale model that going on there, but it's the idea that when we, when you look at it from the perspective of an atom, uh, there's really, uh, when you look at it, there's nothing, hold on, let me see here. Um, it has, Adam has no awareness. It has no ability to conceive of the fact that it's part of something that is aware of its existence. And sure. it creates this, this conscious entity, whereas if you look at just the atom, the atom is not aware, but it creates something that does have consciousness. And I'm just saying that maybe if you... Um, it's premised on the fact that it's not immediately obvious, based on what we lo- know about the laws of the universe, the forces of nature, that if you assemble a complex structure from the building blocks of matter it will give rise to a conscious sentient being. And I think I'm going to, I'm going to interrupt you for one, one second, just because there's something I heard in there that I just want to get clarity on. Initially, you said your argument was that the universe itself was the body of God. And you seem to be positing as evidence that the reason that would be the case 
is because you know solar systems are potentially like individual components like the smallest components like an atom is um and then going from there to say the reason that you're saying that is because atoms in people can't individually have consciousness panpsychists would probably disagree with you by the way um but they arise consciousness so i'm not understanding how you can use that as a counter argument um when it comes to like the composition of people but accept it as valid in your argument that the universe itself is the body of god because wouldn't you encounter the same issue could, could you i'm sorry i did i'm not actually understanding your question what were you so what are you trying what's the problem you're identifying again the, the problem i'm identifying is that you you're admitting a, and but I, I'd agree with you that there is like, you know, this hard problem of consciousness um, that an individual atom doesn't have a sense of, you know, self or identity, but a, a conglomeration of them in a specific um, way in an organism does have consciousness. Your initial claim was that the universe itself is the body of God. You seem to be focusing in on that problem here, but not yeah. uh, acknowledging that you would also have that problem. Right. If the universe is the body of God and you're looking at solar systems as as components like individual atoms, you don't have a theory there for their coalescence into a conscious entity either. Uh, right. It's not so much that we, we cannot explain. Uh, I don't think you have to be able to explain how consciousness arises. It's just the fact it's just something we observe happening. So we don't know how atoms produce conscious, at least I don't think we do. In the same way, I can't say, well, here's the laws of the universe that state that the solar systems, when you add them all together, create this giant, you know, super entity or super consciousness that we would call God. But it gives plausibility to the idea because if it happens on the smaller scale, it might happen on the macro scale. And it just it's not something that proves anything, and it does rely on kind of, well, we'd be ignorant of how it actually all works, but it happens on the small scale, so maybe it happens on the on the macro scale. Yeah, the big word there in what you just said is maybe. And, and like, the, the, the thing is, comparing the two things that you were just talking about, and you said, you know, well, we can see that consciousness exists, and so even though we don't know the bridge between atoms and consciousness, we at least know that there is one, even if we can't identify it. You're now saying... Well, we can draw that same theoretical bridge between solar systems and God, but you don't even have the God on the other side. So with consciousness, we have the atoms and we have consciousness. We know those two things are real. And there we have a theoretical bridge for what you're saying is we have solar systems and now we have this God that we don't know that exists. And we have a bridge that we don't know that exists between like, you see how that's kind of lacking? Like there's no reason to ask this question because right. there's no, yeah, it, it, it's, it's yeah, not, kind of falls apart. You're right. Yeah. It's, it's not proof of anything, but it's just it, it, it's drawing a, a, a sort of an analogy to where we can kind of say, again, like we're seeing this happen and it kind of looks like maybe if you scale up to larger versions of what we're seeing on this scale, mm -hmm. theoretically, just like an atom isn't aware of a, it's part of a conscious being, maybe, you know, we're there's a type of consciousness we don't understand that arises from a conglomeration of galaxies and such. And it's not, can you see why that's too many just... inferences for us though? Like so, yeah. you're making inferences yeah. towards something that like, there's no demonstration that solar systems coalesce into anything resembling an entity. And even if we did accept that to be the case, there is no entity that we can reference and look at and demonstrably ask or ascertain whether or not it has consciousness that is comprised of those solar systems. So it's just maybe an interesting thought experiment, but yeah. it, it, ha it, it kind of stops there. It doesn't have anything to support it other than, you know, speculation, which isn't how I would operate when it comes to whether or not I believe in something, especially something that would be like if I said, if there, yeah. if there are gnomes living under my house, then their nervous system might be made of cotton candy. <laughs> That's not an argument for gnomes living under my house, just because I think there, there might be this connection. Some, you know what I mean? No, you're Sorry. right. Yeah. I, I definitely, I'm definitely not ar ar uh, arguing this as definitive proof, but right. uh, just something that, you know, if you, if you think about it and, you know, I kind of, Imagine that we're the we're the atoms. We're the things that can't fathom what yeah. might be at this massive scale. But all right, I just something 
Then, yeah. so if you think about it, you that. could write a cool science fiction book and that would be lovely, but it, it, uh, it doesn't really do anything else beyond that, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I would agree All with right. you there. And we do, we have to let you go, Anthony. It was lovely to have a chat with you. Thank you for calling nice in today. It up, man. See you later. <laughs> have a nice day. Bye. For the nerds in the audience, I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 reasons why I don't believe in what that person was saying. <laughs> We're going to have fun today for us. Avogadro jokes. <laughs> We're going to have fun because I don't understand that reference, but you it's seem a very mold. enthusiastic. Oh, it's a mo- we'll get to it later. We'll talk we'll about get to it later. later. We, me and you can talk about it after the show and you can explain <laughs> to me why it's funny. <laughs>